Hello, everyone, and this is Pam Nakpil, and this mm -hmm. is The Moving Truth with Pam. So for today, I have <laughs> a good friend who I incidentally met in French class. Mm -hmm. And when we met, it was purely video. COVID time, we never got to meet face-to-face -face until, mm -hmm. you know, COVID got to ease a little bit. So we were screen, screen friends yes. more than anything. <laughs> So, my guest today is Ola Lawal from Nigeria. Ola, tell us about yourself. Oh, thank you, Pam. It's so good to be here. Good to be here with you. My name is Ola Mite Lawal, but I tell people they can call me Ola. <laughs> it's, it's easier. I am married to my best friend of over 15 years, wow. and we have two beautiful girls um, who I'm so proud. I'm super proud of them. How old are they now? So one of them, the first is five and a half, and okay. then three, the second is like two and a half. Two. Okay. They are toddlers. Yeah. yeah. And uh, about me, I love to help people and give a lot. So sometimes my husband <laughs> says, Ola, <laughs> you do it too much. But <laughs> I, I love to do that. It gives me joy to see people I help, ex especially when they succeed. I work as a charter, um, I, I work with Charter Professional Accountant of New Brunswick right now. Wow. Yes. Okay. So I you am. are an accountant here in New Brunswick? I've always been an accountant, <laughs> and I dare to say I'll always be an the accountant. accountant. Okay, that's <laughs> not me. That's not me at all. I like the letters. I, numbers, not so much. Oh. So what did you used to do in Nigeria, and where in Nigeria were you? Did you live? Okay, I lived in Lagos in Nigeria. It's the biggest city in Nigeria. And I used to be an accountant. Uh, yeah. I have a back background in accounting. I used to be an accountant. I'm still an accountant <laughs> because that's only the only thing I can find myself doing. I'm super passionate about accounting. So I did it in Nigeria and I'm still doing it here. So, yeah. But like, I know that you can't really practice accountancy immediately. Like. Did you have to do anything to be able to practice here? Because that's what I hear from some friends. So you actually can practice accounting. There's just a designation that can help you, that can enhance your like experience as an accountant. Okay. It's the Charter Professional Accountant. Unfortunately, I work for that professional body. Okay. So yes, so um, I, when I got here too, um, a month after I got here, I got the designation. Okay. Uh, yeah, and he has helped me. He has helped me grow professionally. He has helped me become like part of uh, a group of professionals, and mm -hmm. I've learned a lot being a part of them. Yeah. Okay, I will ask you later about the process of being a CPA here, because mm. I know some people said it, it's different. You don't immediately become. But like before you being an accountant here as well in New Brunswick, like, in Lagos, it, it's a big city, it's, it's home. So why suddenly the decision, was it like one day, we're moving <laughs> to Canada and we're moving to Moncton, who nobody knows about initially. Oh, wow. Like, so what happened? What was the thought process of you coming here? Okay, I'll say my husband and I are some sort of explorers. Uh, and we have explored living in different countries, well, temporarily in different capacities, uh, sometimes for work, sometimes for school. So you've done that before? Oh, yeah. Well, like but where? it was temporary. Like I was in the U.S. for a while. Like sometimes I would go for work to other countries on like short term secondments. That's what oh, we used to call it. Okay. And work yeah, with yeah, teams yeah. in other places. And then my husband studied in the U.K. too. So. From then, even before we got married, well, we weren't married then, but we had always thought about the idea of settling in another country after marriage, and we pursued that dream, and here we are. So you went to the U.S., your husband, Dej, went to, is it Dej or Dej? Deji. Deji. Yeah. Deji studied in the U.K. Yeah, for so a bit. So why Canada? <laughs> like, so, okay, yeah, you had well, those I didn't, I didn't live in the U.S. for long. It was for work, mm -hmm. just like like any other country. Uh, I think DJ was in the U.K. for about three and a half years, mm -hmm. thereabout. Yeah, but we started doing our research after we came back to Nigeria, like doing our research, and then we ended up with Canada. And 
I think one selling point for us was the fact that it's um, family friendly, like the fact that we could come here and be ourselves, like it was, it was big for us, like, okay. like, that we could come to a country where we'll be accepted, like diversity isn't an issue, so it was, it was like a selling point for us. So I understand Canada, but mm. why? Your Brunswick, <laughs> and my, why Moncton? I mean, we've been asked this question. <laughs> I'm sure your family must have I get, asked you that. I get asked that question every time. Sometimes I tell people uh, I live in Moncton, New Brunswick, and they're like, "Where Where's is that?" that? <laughs> uh, well, for me, I'll be factual. Uh, when I was doing my research, New Brunswick didn't come into the picture. It yeah. wasn't in the picture at all. But we have a friend here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's a family friend. And we thought when we settled on Canada, we thought that maybe it would be better to settle in a city or province where we had a Someone friend. You know. Yeah, it would help us settle in well. And then, the, well, the initial plan was to leave New Brunswick after we settle, like just Did come here to settle. <laughs> But guess what? We're stuck. We're stuck here. Like, Why? Why are you yeah, stuck? Yeah, and for me, it's that environment, the community. I love the fact that I can raise. I have two young children, and it's super easy for me to raise my kids here. I love the welcoming nature of people. Back from where I come from, Lagos is a big city, and sometimes it's, uh, it's like you see people that are serious-minded, you no know, body smells, and then it's oh, wow, sort of yeah. a breath of... Um, fresh, fresh air, air. When, I, when I see people and they smile, everybody's calm. So the welcoming environment for me is a big deal. Yeah, it is. You know, you mentioned that. I remember instances back home mm -hmm. that we would like say hi to people and they would like, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought the Filipinos were friendly. So yeah. it's like, but yeah. here you're right. Yeah. When you see people on the street, they'll be smiling yeah. and welcoming. Yeah. I especially like the street. <laughs> uh, stop sign. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Everybody, everybody wants, everybody <laughs> wants to go. So that's, I know, I know. That's right. your birthday. I that's know, know. I know. So when you got here, how many kids did you have? I know <laughs> there's a story to that. Uh, yeah, so I had my first daughter like six months before we came to. Wow. Yeah. So I, you moved with a six-month yeah, baby. Actually, oh, well, she traveled when she was about. Uh, eight weeks because I had her in the U.S. Oh. So, yes. <laughs> so uh, she's a bit of story there, yeah. Oh, okay. I had her in the U.S. Then I took her back to Nigeria. But this process, the process of our permanent residency for Canada was already on at that time. It was so, going on. Yeah, and yeah. then, so we came here like six months after she was born. And then I had my second child during COVID. <laughs> COVID baby, huh? COVID baby. So what's your name? Yeah. Not Covidia or something? No, 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 not Covidia. <laughs> uh, their names are Tiara and Fiji. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So how is it, like, comparing, I know you didn't stay long with your child and your eldest in Nigeria, in mm -hmm. Lagos, but, like, how would you compare seeing probably friends or family having children in Nigeria versus having children here? What do you see as a difference? There in Nigeria, the community raises your children, not just your parents. And uh, it's one big deal for me when we're moving here because it's not just about your immediate family. The community raises your child, and I didn't really experience a lot of that because my child was just six months yeah, old. But yeah. even for the few months that were in Nigeria, like I had a support system that. I didn't have to worry about raising yeah. my child. Yeah, and for me, it's something that you can't trade yeah. for anything. Yeah. So how are you dealing with the, you know, seemingly lack of support system? Because family, both close family and close friends are back in Nigeria. How are you dealing with that? Yeah, so I wouldn't say that there is no support system. Honestly, I feel that it's not exactly the same in Nigeria because, well, that's where I grew up, so I know a lot of people yeah. already. I just feel that you have to find it, be right of the, be part of the right group. I think the support system is here. It might take a bit of time. It might not be the same, but again, we need to give ourselves some credit. We're coming to a new country where we probably don't know anybody. So it might take a bit of time. And my kids do keep me busy. 
but I love I love spending time with her. <laughs> Between so, work and kids? Oh, they do keep me busy. So <laughs> I, I just think everything takes a bit of time and being part of the right group, asking questions, looking for the help, I'm and not sure. assuming you have to take it on all yourself. So have you found that support system here? Are you finding friends that, you know, you can be with and... Yeah, the social system is there, and I'm proud to be part of sub social system that I've offered help t times when I need them, and I've taken some up some of them. It didn't come exactly at the beginning, but I had my baby during COVID, and I yeah. got a lot of stuff. Even though I I felt that it was going to be difficult, but it wasn't. It? I felt overwhelmed with love, like from Aww. that support system, and I am forever grateful. As a matter of fact, it changed. Um, some of the things I do because right now for me I when I know um, a pregnant person or someone that just gave birth uh, gives birth I like help them I volunteer to help them because of the kind Experience. of support I received and it was I'm forever grateful for unbelievable it. right yeah. especially having ba a baby during yeah, COVID exactly I mean, you can't go out you can't yeah. do much and you never know how other people's actions affect you, how they impact you. For me, it has impacted me, and I would always, when I see a pregnant, not like I wouldn't help any other person, but I'm particularly, yeah. So the, the support came from fellow Nigerians or from everyone in the community that you had? Fellow Nigerians, colleagues, like, so it yeah, was, it was from everywhere. It's a multicultural Yes, help it was thing. basically from everywhere. That's yeah. good, that's yeah. good. And the Nigerian community is growing as well in Moncton? Oh, yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, it's <laughs> growing and I'm happy. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy about it. Very yeah. happy as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, okay, going here, so you had a job as an accountant, finding a job here, how was that search for you and for... Your husband, how did it happen? Did you have a hard time? Was it easy? For me, I've been fortunate. Honestly, I've been very, very fortunate. When we got here, I knew I didn't want to start working immediately because I had um, a, an eight-month-old baby. And I, yeah. it's a new country, so I wanted to help her settle. So I knew I wasn't going to start working immediately. But honestly, when I started looking for work I it wasn't too long wow. before I got something and I got a great job I got to uh, I got a job that I loved it wasn't just something I had to cope with for the yeah. time being mm -hmm. and it was a great position so I couldn't have asked for more it wasn't for me it was so what is this position now Ola so I'm not working where I used to work okay, so I started but... working at um at TD bank fi finance operations and I was the manager of accounting operations when I started wow. initially. Then I moved to the Chartered Professional Accountant of New Brunswick, where I'm Director of Regulatory Affairs wow. right now. Yeah. So, like, okay, your husband first. How did how was his work search? How did he do it? Was it easy as well for him? Yeah, it was. It was pretty much the same. My husband worked with RBC initially, okay. and then he moved to TD Bank Finance. Would you left? So, <laughs> well, there was a time we had, I think we had a bit of overlap, but not too long. Yeah, we had a, but we're in different teams, okay. but not too long. And then, well, the TD is a big yeah. organization now. Oh, okay. yes, yes. So absolutely. if I'm an accountant, like say somewhere else, mm -hmm. how do I become a chartered accountant here? Reach out to the Chartered Professional Accountant of New Brunswick. <laughs> is, is it an easy <laughs> process? Do I have to fear, like, I'd have to study again, you know? So, yeah, it's on a case-by-case -case basis because okay. people have, have different educational background. They okay. have different experience. They have different professional qualification. So it's very hard to, like... Um, box it. Box it, yeah. It's on a case-by-case -case basis, honestly. But it yeah. is possible. Oh, yes, it is very possible. And I personally encourage people. I, I tell people, if you really love accounting, you want to pursue a career in accounting, then you should get your CPA designation. Before I go into the things you miss back home, <laughs> this is one thing I'm not sure everyone <laughs> knows about Ola. She was one of the top 40 uh, under 40, is that top right? 20 top under 20, 40. Wow, top 20 <laughs> under 40. I'm not under 40. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how was that for you, Ola? I mean, in a new country, top 20 
of under 40 in Moncton. How did that feel? How was it I you? didn't even think that anybody would recognize what I do, wow. but it feels great. Especially, like, super great that um, your work is recognized. The community recognizes you. The acceptance is just, um, it gives you uh, immeasurable pleasure. So I'm, I'm glad that I have been recognized, and I'm grateful. It's not just a recognition, <laughs> right? It's more of that you were appreciated. Yeah, exactly. So thank you for putting it that yeah, way. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's more yes, of that. Yes, yeah. yes. That people and realized. Has, yeah, and he has really, really motivated me. He has really motivated me to want to do more. I really want to be a part of this community. I want to keep helping yep. people for as There's long no as I can. There's no leaving months now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, if you're comparing Legos and here, what it is it that you miss most? My family. I love, love my family. I'm super close to my family. And I, I, I don't regret this move to New Brunswick, to Canada. But one thing I do miss, and I wish I had, was like the all of my family. I have a very big family. How many <laughs> brothers and sisters? You know, oh, I have two brothers and three sisters. <laughs> and they're back home. Oh yeah, maybe. they're back home. No, nobody. No one else has wanted to come here. <laughs> oh well, maybe we'll see. We'll see how you <laughs> it pans Usually out. Usually, it's like one starts and then the whole family's here. Before yeah, you know we'll it. see how it pans out. But that's one thing. They're my support system, and I do miss them. I, I, I think that's the one thing that. I look back to see, but I still don't regret don't my movie. It, and thank God for technology. <laughs> it's, oh, not yes. as, it's not as bad, but it's not the same as that physical. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah but technology is helping a lot. Oh, I, yeah. I remember when we were young, my mom moved to the U.S. And it's like, I wondered how she did it. Because there was no Facebook. Yeah, I there can was imagine. no. You know, FaceTime or whatever yeah, calls imagine. she can make face to face. It must have been really sad for her, yeah. but hey, well, here we are. We're grateful for technology yeah. advances. Very <laughs> grateful. So what is it that you fear most being here? Like, I know we have all the conveniences here. We, you know, we can buy nice houses, cars. But what is it that you fear most being an immigrant? Winter. <laughs> I know well, that wasn't yeah. the answer. I know that wasn't the answer you expected. Well, well, well we, we can we can count winter as one. We can always count winter as one. No worries. Winter, about that. I couldn't deal with the cold initially, but I know you just have to dress for it. But well, yeah, uh, I remember you say that every time we had French class, you said that. Oh yeah, winter, winter, winter. But anyway, I've learned to deal with winter. But one thing I fear the most. Well, it's not fair, but I make sure that I work on is I don't want my children to lose our cultural values okay. even though we're here. I really, um, I try to teach them, we're not in Nigeria, but I teach them, I tell them stories about Nigeria, they talk to their cousins in Nigeria. I just uh, want them to know that they, even though some of their families are not here, they have a family back home. So that cultural value is really important for me and that's one of the reasons I like being here. The fact that we can be ourselves, we don't have to throw away um, that Your culture. culture. Yeah, that's big for me. I think we just need to also make our children not forget where we came from. Yeah, exactly. Roots. Very important for me. And, Very. Uh, you know, working with a group of um, ethnocultural associations mm -hmm. here, I find that most of us want to be able to transfer Mm -hmm. language, culture, dances, food to our children mm -hmm. and for them not to forget. Yeah. That. Yeah. It's it's big for me too and I, I do it. I tell my children some things I make Nigerian food and they're like, Mommy, what's this? I'm like, oh. and then I explain to them and I think they, they know it. they're so young, but yeah. I think this is the time to teach them and yes. they'll grow with it. Yeah. Yeah, right. because will are you planning to teach them your language as well? I know you have a different yeah, so I I try. <laughs> I but, know my son but too. English, like, English is like a default go-to, but know, sometimes I, I try. And my my elder daughter, she understands. Okay. Well, she doesn't speak the language so much, but when I say something to her in our language, she she understands. She understands. Yeah. Will they study French? 
Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I, well, <laughs> I studied French too, so I could also help them. Understand. So, yeah, and she started taking classes in French. in French. <laughs> she was very good in a I'll French class. I'll take it. She was very good. I don't know about that, but I'll take yeah, it. But she was very good. Okay, so if you had to do it over again, will you still do it? Oh, absolutely, no doubt. I will do it because I can't complain. I don't have anything to complain about. Yes, life gets tough sometimes, but that's yeah. just life. It's about being open-minded, learning to accept things, dealing with things that, as they come. Like I always tell people, one step at a time. So I would do it over again, like over and over again. Do you have any advice to people thinking about the move, whether they're from Lagos or somewhere else? Like, what would you say are the things to consider when deciding to move? I think the first um, important thing is that people need to take it easy on, on themselves. You're moving to a new country. It's a new environment, new, Where everything is new. Yeah, exactly. So give it a bit of time. Things might not fall into place immediately, but they will fall into place. Mm -hmm. So give it a bit of time. Be open-minded. And I always tell people, ask questions. So I used to be timid about asking questions, but now my mantra is, I tell my husband, if you never ask, you never know. So exactly. just ask. There, there are agencies out there that are willing to help you settle, like immigrants settle, newcomers settle. So ask questions, access the, um, the opportunities you have, and just give it time and everything will fall in place. I, so do you feel that Canada is home now? Oh, yes. I, I, I'm proud to call Canada home. I yes, am. yes, true, yes, true. yes. Well, thank you very much, Ola. It is a pleasure to have you. I am thank so thankful you. that she, <laughs> she didn't want to, but she agreed to have it, to yeah. be here with me. Um, and I appreciate seeing you again. We haven't seen each other for some time. But thank you so much. And I'm happy that I did it. I'm happy. I'm happy I did this. It was great chatting with yeah. you. <laughs> with that, thank you, everyone. And we'll see you at the next show. Bye-bye.